And uh, today I'm going to do the second part. Um, so yesterday I basically gave a brief idea of how our block used decentralized identity and how we use verifiable credentials in all across our system. Um, and today's session I'm more focused going to uh, focus on how to build on our block. Slides. So let's go back a little bit to uh, our blocks overview. Uh, yesterday, um, oh, I showed this picture, this big picture. Uh, this is the architect of the floor block. Uh, as you can see that we have multiple different layers. And uh, but yesterday we were more focused on the, our in the layer, uh, the identity layers, um, talking about the DID, VC, and also we talked uh, you know, a few important components that we built for DID. Uh, like DID Wallet, DID Connect, and uh, DID Spaces. Uh, but all of those are like the foundation service for the platform. Uh, to hacking on our block, uh, what you essentially need to do is you're going to be building a few building blocks on top of that. Uh, so today I'm going to give you a little bit more uh, details about that. Uh, so our block's key feature are, are the blocklet framework architect. Uh, so that's a part on the computing part. Uh, so we, you can see on the computing box here, we have blocklet framework, uh, which is a framework and tools for you to build applications. And we also have an uh, a important uh, component called a blocklet server. Uh, so the blocklet server is, is basically like an operation system uh, for this whole R block architect. Um, so the, the goal for R block is to make the development and deployment, the decentralized apps, uh, way much easier. And uh, um, so we are, remember that our blog is more kind of focused on the decentralized apps and, uh, but it's also, it works for any apps because what is the apps? And we can spend enough time to discuss what is the apps and what is apps. Uh, just in this, uh, in this case, we just uh, simplify that. You just imagine this is a type of applications uh, that can be run on multiple different places. So this is, again, this is the, this is the, the part that I uh, spent the last uh, session uh, to talk about. So our foundation are built on top of this identity layer that is based on the DID. Uh, our principle is the DID everywhere. Uh, so that basically means every identifier uh, is a DID and uh, every verification is through verifiable credentials. Uh, so you might ask why our blog doing this, why we are doing this. Um, we, we're doing this not just because uh, DID is a standard, uh, just because, uh, uh, as I mentioned, that we are building a platform for the DApps, decentralized application. Uh, uh, one of the uh, one of very interesting thing for DApps is DApps means um, there is no kind of a one party, a big cent central party running everything from uh, on their data center. And, and the data and the software, the component, and the users, they are distributed. Uh, there's multiple different centers that that is decentralization, right? Um, so one, the biggest issue for you to organize a bunch of people to working together uh, uh, as a, like a whole service, the biggest issue, number one issue is actually the identifiers, right? Imagine, right, you have, you are using Facebook, you're using Google, you're using other service, all of those different services give you different identity uh, identifiers. Uh, some of them are using name, um, like handle. Some of them use an email address. Some of them just give you a number. Uh, if you want to kind of organize them together, the first thing you're going to hit is uh, you're probably like one, two, three, five uh, in one places, and you are like uh, uh, you know your name handle on Twitter, and about you, you are using a different email on uh, on Google, right? So. Yeah, so that's even your account across different systems. Can you imagine that there's multiple different parties? Each of them has like hundreds or thousands of users and each of them use different format, different rules for the ident identifiers. It's going to be a chaos, right? So with the DID, that is enabled that everybody following the same protocol and nobody has to own all these kind of uh, identifiers. Um, so then, um, so different system. Um, can work together without a worry about the identifier you know, conflict or or do, do not recognize the other's identifiers. And also for the verification, since it's a decentralized, if you're running like one centralized ser service, you can probably trust 
your database is secure. You know, your none of your system are everybody in your system are all your homemade, and nobody is going to try to you know give other difficulties. But if you're running a decentralized system, uh, so basically everybody has to you know work together with others, and nobody in control. And you cannot blindly trust the uh, the other party in the decentralized system because you don't know that is a good behavior or be bad behavior or just somebody you know unintentionally make some mistakes, right? So you have to you know verify everything that is correct, that is right, right? So that's how verifiable presentation is coming. Uh, so this is basically the, like the the principle that why we eventually adopt uh, the decentralized uh, identifier and verifiable credentials everywhere. Um, they turned out to be really good. So the technology itself uh, with a Tuzin framework is pretty easy and the turned out to be uh, built on top of this. We are able to build this architect that uh, lets the, the software working together uh, without a worry about, uh, without need some one party holding everything. Uh, mm -hmm. So to make this, uh, uh, to make this works, uh, there is an important part uh, uh, called uh, we call it blocklet. So that's a, the computation part uh, of our whole architect. The computation part is basically means this is the place that the software is running. Uh, so in our block, just like we mentioned that every identifier is a DID, um, we also have this kind of very simple principle that is everything that runs on our block is a blocklet. Uh, so blocklet is just a name. You can imagine this is a name. Just imagine this is like building blocks, like a brick. Like a Lego brick, right? So, so uh, the blocklet itself uh, is a lightweight. If you can imagine this is kind of lightweight container. It's like a container technology, and uh, so, but it is very lightweight. And uh, these containers, uh, usually, what we let it do is it only do one thing. Uh, so we have this kind of principle that we take from the unit system design is we wish each of the blocklet. Uh, the ideal way is to do one thing and do it well. And uh, the whole blocklet architect is help you try to uh, let you put different uh, blocklets together and stack them together and make the blocklet talk to each, each other so easily. And so the blocklet itself can be, it can run as a server uh, or serverless. Uh, basically means if, as a server, if you are uh, uh, somebody who understand the software system well, uh, you can host your own blocklet server and then you can run the application on top of that. Uh, but if you're just a developer that you don't want to worry about anything about how to set up a server, how to maintain the whole thing, you can run the blocklet serverlessly. Uh, so that basically means somebody else can provide the server and maintenance for you. And uh, you all you need to do is only you know, care about how to build the software and, uh, and then the, everything else, DevOps thing, somebody else take, take over for you. Uh, the blocklet is a is a full stack uh, design that basically means it can handle front end or the back end, right? If you no matter your software is a, something very simple like a single page application, you only need the web web page front end. Uh, like a lot of you know, today's blockchain application like Uniswap, many of, of those they do not actually have a back end or their back end are completely on blockchain, and they only need to build front end. Uh, but the, the, the real world. Uh, more complex web applications, they need both front end and back end. And uh, a blocklet architect gets you covered, uh, so you don't need to worry about that. So it's just, just a traditional, um, how you, do, uh, it's just a basically the, the traditional architect of a, of a typical uh, online software. Right? Um, so since this is a blocklet server, essentially blocklet server is a Linux based server. So it's around any applications. Um, and so that's why we say our blocks are part of all different kinds of blockchain. No matter it's a, uh, it's a application that run Ethereum, uh, run on any layer two Ethereums uh, or uh, running Solana or some, some other uh, blockchains, um, you can have the application run on uh, Blocklet. Uh, so a major goal for Blocklet design is make sure that is reusable and composable. Uh, so you, since we try to make that as a software Lego, imagine this was the biggest character of the Lego is Lego. You don't need that many different blocks and uh, then you can quick, but you can use all those basic blocks to compose them uh, into something, um, into something really, really cool and really complex. 
So the block lab server itself, it can be self-hosted actually for any developers here today. Anybody who wants to develop a, a block uh, a block lab, uh, we with code, we highly highly encourage that you install a block lab server on your developer um, environment, and that that basically means you have a self-hosted local block lab server that is running. And when you provide that uh, as a form of service, eventually you need to have the block lab server run you know, on the cloud or on a hosted servers yourself, or it could be mixed mixed together. Um, so so the, the the important part I just mentioned is like a, like Legos. Uh, so actually um, the architect of the art blocks try to build is a is a software Lego uh, architect. That basically means there's a lot of components that you can build, you can you can reuse and uh, all those software components here, are blocklets. Remember that everything that runs on our block, they are blocklets. Uh, just to, if we look back on this kind of big pictures, you know, uh, what is DID wallet? What is DID connect? Uh, so they are foundation uh, services, but it actually they are also blocklet. Every block, every piece of gear, they are blocklet. We even build the blockchain and we build the data spaces. They are all run as a blocklet. So uh, it's pretty simple. And uh, so we try to build a bunch of uh, uh, components that is uh, that is used as an important part of this ecosystem. For example, the blocklet store. The blocklet store is an app store alike uh, component um, that you can find in many other components or other applications that you can reuse. Or, re um, but this blocklet server itself, a uh, blocklet store itself, is a blocklet, and it also can be reused. That basically means that you can build your own store very easily by just reusing block of stores. Right? Um, so it's not like the uh, like uh, in iOS, you can you see the app store is pretty good, but you can if you want to have a uh, your own app store, you uh, you cannot reuse this. <clears throat> Those block lab components, uh, they're ready to use out of the box. Um, uh, there is another type of uh, 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 blocklet we call application tools. Uh, so application tools, they are also blocklets, um, uh, but they are out of box of software that you can immediately uh, use them. Um, so uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, applications that we are ready you know, for you to use. Um, so they are also blocklets. Um, so, um, in these application layers, we also create a bunch of tools. Uh, for example, one of the tools I'm going to introduce to, uh, that is a no code tools uh, to help you to build applications. Uh, basically, uh, this tool itself is a blocklet. And uh, the the, the, if you use this tool, you are going to use this blocklet tools to create more blocklets. And uh, so that's how uh, the, this whole system looks like. <clears throat> So uh, when we talk about building different type of blocklets, uh, so there is a multiple different types of blocklets. Uh, so a, a very uh, basic and traditional blocklets is we call the executable blocklets. That's basically that's application. That, what the uh, application means. Uh, so executable blocklets are software that can run on the blocklet servers. It can you know perform some certain tests. Uh, the default we support the default uh, executable blocklet to use the use the engine of Node.js. That basically means if you use Node.js, um, you can uh, build blocklets that runs on the blocklet servers. Uh, but the blocklet server itself, as I mentioned, the blocklet itself server itself is support multiple different engines like Python, Go, PHP, you know, Rust, whatever, uh, anything that can run on Linux, uh, you're able to. Uh, run that uh, on blocklet servers. And the, moreover, uh, the blocklet servers support the blocklet defined engine. Uh, so that is to say, uh, you can use a blocklet to create a new type of language or new type of runtime um, that is powered the executable blocklet. Uh, so, so that basically means that you can implement some blocklet with some kind of high level you know, language or high level, you know, uh, different runtime environment that is defined by another blocklet. So that makes the whole thing like infinitely extensible. 
uh, each of the blocklet, uh, those blocklet that can be Docker image. Uh, so that basically means if you already have something that is around Docker, uh, for example, a database, like, or another application like WordPress, right? In this case, you don't want to rebuild everything from scratch as a blocklet. Uh, so the good new news is um, you are able to run uh, the other doc image uh, as a blocklet. So, um, so that's very good. So that's basically extending a lot of ecosystem from Docker's in uh, to be able to kind of, include in our uh, whole ecosystem. Uh, so a blocklet could also be a gateway or wrapper of uh, external services. Uh, so that is useful. For example, if you want to use a very large scale database or like if, uh, a database on the cloud and you don't want to run that on your own block server on the node, um, you can have a gateway or wrapper uh, service blocklet. Uh, then you know, all your other application only need to talk to that, you know, gateway block, blocklet. And this is typically used when we used to uh, use a blockchain or use a large language model. Um, you see there is a blocklet that is used as an interface for the blockchain and the large language model, but actually they are just uh, like a gateways or the connecting to uh, external services. Yeah, but, uh, but from the other point of view, you just uh, see this is, there's a, there, there is a blocklet that is uh, connecting them. So those are all the executable blocklets. Um, <clears throat> another type of important blocklet we call resource blocklet. So resource blocklet is the simplest uh, uh, version of the blocklet, but they are still you know, pretty useful. Uh, you can put anything, any data into the resource blocklet. For example, um, you can put an image, you can put videos, you can put HTML static pages uh, into a resource blocklet. Because some of the applications, you probably only need a static HTMLs. Then you don't need to, you, you, all you need to do is just put some uh, static HTML in, into it. Um, another type of blocklet is, for example, if you provide a software that uh, provided the uh, resource like the image or like a, uh, like a web page templates uh, or a theme de definitions, um, you can actually create that into a blocklet for others to reuse. All you need to do is just put those data into these resource blocklets. Uh, we have a very, to be able to build those resource blocklets, we have a very comprehensive tool that it come together with a blocklet server uh, that you can very easily use. The third type of a blocklet, uh, we call a composite blocklet. For most of the applications that you see um, uh, in the previous diagram, they are, they are most of them, they are composite blocklets. So those applications, they are most of their composite blocklets. Uh, why they're composite? The composite blocklet is basically, <clears throat> is basically itself is a definition of how to combine uh, other blocklets together and, uh, and put them into a full, full function application. Uh, it also could be some kind of config configuration data of other blocklets. The reason why most of those applications are composite blocklet is basically because we, um, based on our design, the software Lego, for example, this NFT studio, this aging, um, they are very kind of you know, full functional piece of the software, but it's not necessary for us to kind of rebuild everything from, you know, put them all together. So they're actually reusing a bunch of other uh, blocklets so, so the developer do not need to rebuild. So, but you want to give the users a final you know, experience that you feel that the user feel that, okay, I have some uh, application, not only I have this kind of a key features, but also we have um, all the, for example, the, the web page, the FAQs, the documents, um, we need to put all them together into a full software you know, package. Uh, so that's why uh, composite block, um, you know, come in. Right. So this is three major type of blocklets. So that's basically the, the, the basic concept of the R blocks, you know, building, you know, how to build the apps you know, on R block. And uh, so the simplest way uh, to get started um, to build an R block is a, is a no code way. Um, so I believe a lot of people, um, when you, even we try to build a lot, uh, a lot of framework and tools for the blocklet, whole blocklet architect. It still have learning curves. In it, it still have some learning curves. Uh, for people who are already familiar with how to develop with Node.js, how to build a full uh, web application, is or how to build with Docker's, uh, is going to be way much easier. Uh, but it still have something to learn. But for people who 
does not have any of those experience, uh, there is going to be a lot of stuff to learn, right? Uh, but the easiest thing, it gets started with no code. Uh, with a no code, that basically means you don't need uh, uh, any of the tools uh, we mentioned. Uh, so we build this uh, tool called Aging. Uh, Aging is an AI based on no code tools for builders. Uh, so aging itself is a blocklet, as I mentioned, it's a blocklet, it's a composite blocklet, it's composed of multiple different together to give you a full function, uh, <laughs> full function application. So the, the purpose of aging is, is let you to build other blocklets. Uh, so all the final produce products you build is going to be another blocklet. And once you build that blocklet, it's no longer need aging. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, you actually build a real blocklets, right? So the agent itself is a no-code uh, environment. Um, it's a, it, it uses the take advantage of the large language models, and uh, it actually supports all kinds of different type of large language models. And you can even actually even uh, write something to extend it to support, a, um, support a new large language models or new AIGC engines. Um, so to visit like aging, all you need to do is just to kind of go to www.aigne.io. Um, so let me show you something for real. So yeah, so to, to get started, all you need to do is just to visit the aging website and uh, we have, uh, let, me, let me go through there. If you go to this aging website and uh, you will see this uh, these screens and uh, we have some news coming out. You will see what's the latest uh, latest, latest news about aging. And uh, we have, actually I have uh, two series of the videos here. If you have time to watch is one is um, live project that is built with aging that it basically explore to you uh, a few of those kind of projects that we build with aging. Some of them they are pretty complex one and uh, you can get some some ideas, uh, some ideas to get inspired how we build this um, with aging. And uh, if you want to like learn from scratch, uh, here is a series of the uh, online course. Uh, this online course uh, going to give you a walkthrough of um, how to use aging to build from uh, build from very beginning and how to use uh, uh, AI, how to have the basic prompt engineering uh, knowledge to use the AI to basically to create this kind of very simple apps. Um, so this is basically basic tutorial that you can go through each of them probably uh, is a, like a less than five minutes videos. And uh, with these videos, you are able to, you will be able to uh, understand how to use these applications. And on this homepage, there's the Explore tab. If you go to this Explore tab, on the Explore tab, this is basically one of the, <clears throat> you can imagine this is kind of playground and uh, uh, we can let anybody to have a you know, brief concept of what it looks like. For example, um, uh, so this is like a, this is like multiple character RPG games. So that this is actually one of the examples that uh, I have in this, uh, we have that in the video to, uh, to tell you how to, you know, what it, um, how, how to create it from scratch. Um, so on each of this kind of a, uh, explore project, you can see there's a run button here. If you click the run button, um, you're going to have this kind of a, uh, on the right side, you're going to have this kind of a, um, very basic, uh, user interface. Uh, to for to give you some ideas uh, how it works, right? And you can also have this kind of share button to open in a new tab. Uh, when you open that on the new tab, so this application is going to run like more completely, right? So as you can see, once so this is the this is basically very close to the final application that you're going to be able to build for this particular you know uh, application. And uh, you can see on the right side, I already have my uh, login information here. You can see this familiar user interface like my DID. And actually this is the part that we have the whole DID connect and the DID related uh, building into this uh, no-code engine. You know, any application that you build, 
uh, as long as you you have, click a checkbox says I need the user to log in to do something, and you're going to have the DID Connect building. You don't need to write a one line of code. That basically means I think honestly qualify for R plus honorable mention uh, is so easy because all you need to do is if you use agent to create application. Uh, you basically automatically have your app application already have your application like supporting the ID. You're using the ID and using verifiable credentials in, in the application um, without even you you starting to write anything yet. Right, so that's a that's a beautiful part of the <coughs> of the uh, no code. Yeah. So um, so in this in this explorer tab we have uh, we have many different. Um, uh, applications. Some of them are really simple. Some of them are a uh, little bit complex. And actually, most of them they are actually have a certain use. Uh, it's they're not purely demos. Um, a a nice part of this um, um, a nice part of this um, uh, explorer session is that every time you can, whenever you see something interesting, you can click this make your own. Um, you once you click this make your own, uh, it's going to make a fork of this project and uh, that go to into your own project. So if you want to go to your own uh, project studio, you just click this uh, third button, uh, third third menu to try now. Once you click, you're going to see um, your own project. As you can see, I already have this project list here. Um, some of them. Uh, are actually I forked from the explore tab. So so whenever you click on any explorer, you see a project. You see that's interesting. I want to uh, try. I want to you know remix this one. And you just click try now. Uh, you just need to make my own, and it's going to to create a clone of that project into your project. And then once you click on that project, you're going to be able to edit that. For example, for that RPG, particular RPG project I clicked, um, once I clicked in, you go to into this, uh, this we call the agent studio. So this is where you are beginning to design your agent. Uh, so don't get scared about here. Uh, so even if it is no code, there's still a few things uh, you need to do. Uh, so for example, you know, on this particular, uh, uh, agent project, uh, we define like four agent here. So that's an AI agent. Uh, so agent, each of the, those agent, uh, the, there's still some uh, concept that you need to learn. Uh, so the, each of those agent, it has an input and it has an output. It also has the processing, right? So in this kind of, a, for example, for this kind of agent, this is the agent that is, you know, to get the application up and running to support, we call this game master. That is the first uh, when the user entered into this game, what it does, you can see um, it has no input, uh, it has no processing, it doesn't need to do it, but it has some, it, it defined a bunch of output. So this is output is basically defined um, how this application looks like. Um, so, so we also have a few other agent like is, for example, uh, in, in, in this case, this is used a large language model to define uh, the behaviors of each of these agent. Uh, so we define a guard agent, a king agent, and a maid agent. So that is basically there is a three different type of the of the of the uh, of the games. Uh, um, the, uh, uh, in the game, there are three different type of the uh, characters that the users can play with, and each of those kind of characters, there's you know there is no code here, but each of these characters use a, a large language prompt to define. Uh, what this character going to behave and what's going to uh, you know, interact. As you can see that in this particular uh, examples, those large language models uh, prompt is written in Chinese. Uh, so that's actually one of the important feature for the using the large language model is when you want to define, let the large language model do something, you do not need, always need to write English, right? You can write in your own language. You know, for example, I can write that in Chinese, uh, some of the users, they, they develop the way they, they can even write in code here. Um, so basically, uh, it's very flexible. Uh, but what you need to do is you use this in this IDE. Um, on the right side uh, is the debug session um, that you can use to, uh, use to kind of debug to test uh, what is your, uh, what is your, your uh, agent um, does. Uh, does it work as your, you know, um, 
as you expect it. Um, so even I give this kind of a brief talk. Uh, so this is just to give you a rough idea to understand this. The best way is try to play yourself, to follow the tutorials, to play yourself. And so in the uh, RPLOS DIF hacks, hacks on guide, uh, we have this page. Uh, so one of the important, uh, one of the most easiest is the build on aging. So this gives you a full you know, step of step guide to help you uh, go through. I can I can quickly go through with you here. Uh, so first, the the first part I already uh, talked. Uh, so you go to the uh, this website, and uh, uh, here is a detailed steps for you to you know, to let you know how to you know create your uh, agent project. Uh, so uh, in this tutorial here, so we first have this video, and you you can see uh, on each of the tutorial we have these videos. So the videos actually have a clear walkthrough for you to follow and for you to have uh, how you create, uh, how to start and create the project. And so video, we intentionally make the video into different uh, sections. Each of them only like less than one minute, um, but that give you one step. So you don't need to kind of pause and stop to uh, go back and forth. Uh, if you don't, you know, you didn't see this clearly and you need to repeat it just to go to play this video again. So basically here we walk through, we help you to uh, create the first agent. Uh, so that's like basically like a very you know, simple, uh, you know, a very simple, you know, application that do nothing. But then we are, you know, the second part, uh, we have the tutorials here to, to, to help you understand. An important part is how to customize the agent appearance. So this is a very important concept that we introduced in aging is if you play the other large language model um, uh, applications or even they call that application builders, what you get is not a full application. They're, they're either all those applications that are chat. Uh, they have the exact user interface like a chat or some of those applications only give you an API endpoint. So you end up defining a bunch of things, but you don't have any other interface. You know, it just gives you APIs. And then you need to write another application that talks to your API to, to make that as a full application. Mm -hmm. uh, but the agent, what's different for aging here is the aging um, uh, allow you to create uh, we call it appearance of this agent. So that basically means you can define what this agent will eventually looks like. Uh, it can uh, looks like a, a chat. It can also looks like a very simple like form application input output. It can also be something really complex. And uh, we have <clears throat> you can you are able to kind of define this agent appearance to make it kind of comprehensive applications. So here we have these uh, videos to help you understand how you just uh, kind of uh, click and uh, define. Uh, what those agents looks like, include those agents' icons, their, their welcome message, their text labels, and all of those details. And once you define the as a agent appearance, uh, if you run that, uh, so this, this application we're going to um, looks like you expect it. Uh, so we have in the agent studio, we have a few of those, um, we have a few of those um, ready-made templates uh, for you to use, uh, but for, you know, so those templates are pretty simple, probably good enough for the Hackson. Uh, but if you want to build a, like a real, com very complete applications, you, you, you need some more complex templates. Um, so, so that's, uh, if you're interested, you can look into the document and figure out. We actually uh, be able to create a pretty complex uh, user interface. Uh, so up and if you re, if you if you follow the tutorials until here, you're able to build a, a very simple uh, a blocklet that is backed by a large language model to perform certain things, whatever you want the lar large language will do. You can play around it to get familiar with it here until here. And then the next part uh, we have this uh, in this tutorial is uh, called use image blender to render template engine template images. So that's the part that is, I think, is kind of more relevant to you know, to the DIF accents. So in this tutorial, particular tutorials, 
um, <clears throat> the uh, so the, the the tutorials here is actually building uh, 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 aging user aging to build the application that can uh, generate um, like a ID card or certificate image and then issue that as a verifiable credentials and then you can receive that on the data wallet to receive that very proper credentials. You can follow this kind of two part to, you know, to see how we integrated uh, one of the, uh, the template builders. Uh, and we have re already have like this four ready made templates that is put into the agent studio that for you just to, to learn and play. Uh, but eventually uh, you can decide to create your own uh, image template to issue all kind of different kind of uh, uh, you know final result for no matter it's a certificate or a ticket or any you know, like a, or a badge or anything uh, you can uh, so that's basically uh, what that is actually a what I think for our track is if you are just creating without writing code but you are just able to creating very interesting. Um, image template for others to reuse. Uh, that is also a good hacking project. You can create a, for example, create a, a good badge for a company, uh, a good badge for any digital certificate, make that look very uh, visual uh, to, to render the verifiable credentials. I think that's also, a, uh, it's for us, uh, we count this as a very good, a good hack. So after you following the whole, you know, uh, um, uh, process here to issue the VC in the agent here, you're able to have a, a blocklet that is, you know, that is uh, powered by agent and uh, and uh, also it's going to be able to render one of the image and uh, and also uh, issue, make this image as a part of a very powerful credential and issue to uh, your, your users to use a DID wallet to receive this uh, very powerful credentials. Uh, but up until now, it it verified nothing, right? It's just to you know have this app, just to create a VC and issue to you. And the the latest part is um, we have this QA testing agent. So this is used. A, this is a very, basically a very simple you know question and answer test. Um, so the idea of building this part is. Uh, is it's going to use larger language model to ask your users a few questions like the interview, say, uh, for example, uh, a question, so how, how much knowledge you know about, uh, about Blocklet? How much knowledge do you know about the DID and the VC? And you keep answering the questions. Um, the, for example, the AI is going to ask you 10 questions and then you're going to give the answer. Uh, if your answer is correct and the, uh, then the AI is going to determine it. Okay, you're going to, um, uh, so I can certify that you have enough knowledge to know about the DID. Uh, once you pass this test, and the AI is going to issue you verified credentials, uh, and then you can have these verified credentials to you know, show, say, okay, I passed the test from this AI application that I master certain things, right? So. So this is basically the, the tutorials that follow you to give you a step by step, you know, to follow, to make you create apps that you can, uh, you can do certain things, and then based on the result of the certain things, to issue different certificate uh, as a verifiable credentials to the end users. Uh, and the rest part is basically tell you how if you think this is application that is really useful and good, you if you want to deploy that as a full application, this is the last step. I think this is an advanced topic. So if you read until here, you are able to build application that you can run and you can have a you can have this UIL that you can pass around as a full uh, DID connect building. And um, but after you get all those down, you want to kind of make sure this is not depend on the agent runtime. You want to deliver that as a full application. Uh, so that's the last part that you can. Uh, it basically follow this. You can turn that into a blocklet and they even put publish this to the blocklet server. Uh, so this is pretty much for the uh, uh, build with the, with no code. Uh, so I believe most of the you know, people going to join this hacks are going to use a build with no code options. Um, there's still quite a few concepts you need to learn. 
even built with no code, without writing code, that does not mean it automatic, automatically magically happen. You still need to have some concept. And the more important is you need to have an idea what, what I'm going to build, right? So the, the idea Asian part of this build with no code uh, is exactly, you know, there's nothing less than uh, build with code. You still need to have the complete ideas, right? Uh, so, for example, for anybody who wants to use the, our uh, platform to hacking, uh, I actually uh, watched uh, some other partners in this DI Paxson to look at the, the idea, some of their ideas, some of their challenge. Uh, probably you have to do that with code, but quite a bit of them, uh, but quite a few of those, some of other ideas, you can probably use the no-code tools to solve their problem, especially for the travel session. Um, so what they asked, uh, you probably can use the AI and the DID to kind of try to uh, fix their challenge. Uh, I don't know, based on the uh, DIF rules, uh, can you use our block tools to, uh, to create another application that fit another vendors and eventually you can win the tool track of the price. I don't, I didn't read the, the rule um, yet, but the- That is, case, um, no, that is allowed. Oh, as that is allowed. As, yeah, as long as the, the sponsor isn't saying you have to use our specific tooling, if it's more open, then yeah, you can do that. Okay. Yeah, in many of those factions, and the trick is basically you can create one solution, one project that solve many as many uh, as uh, tracks problem, and then you can win big, right? So I always share into my community that uh, many years ago when I attended the South by Southwest uh, Hackson, so uh, I myself and my team we create a solution that win all the track first prize. <laughs> so that's 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 win us a lot of money and uh, and uh, prizes because we have this one solution that matched everything. Everybody is and and it works perfectly that we win the first prize of all tracks. Uh, so that's a, I think that's a trick to 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 play with Hackson. You can try to understand a different you know um, sponsors their technology and their their questions. And you can probably find and figure out something that you can use A's tool and the B's tool and the C's tool and to solve a play uh, issue from, from the D's, right? And then you get you get the most out, out of it. So I think the hackathon is all about the ideas. So I I, I, I kind of imagine that most of the people are going to probably use the no code to uh, to finish this challenge. Uh, but I will still you know give a brief uh, introduction of uh, if for any hardcore developers who understand the code, who want to write some solid code, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, you you can uh, do the part of that with the code version. So to get started with code is coming to the same document here. Um, you, as you can see in our Hackson uh, in our Hackson guide, uh, we mentioned that you can use a low code to to solve things, or can, you can also use a write you can write a code to 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 figure out something. In the full code challenge, we uh, have like three type of things. One is basically from the simple to the hard. Uh, so we also have these kind of levels um, to have difficult levels here. And uh, we are going to keep updating this document. For example, right now, all those kind of video tutorials are there. Uh, some of them are TBD. Um, uh, we are going to uh, we are going to add more videos into this, so you can always follow uh, exactly based on the video to at least get started. And we're also going to put all those kind of examples here, uh, either into the playground that you can immediately remix, or we can put that, or we will put the code into the GitHub. Um, so you can just clone and play play it. So um, yeah, so if you want to build with code, the simplest way is you follow this tutorial is build with DID wallet. <clears throat> this is the simplest one. So basically for to follow these tutorials, we are going to have give you you know videos to let you know how to you know install the very you know basic part of the dependency, like from from how do you install the environment like Node.js and also the most important, the blocklet CLI into your develop box and to, to get you uh, started with, uh, with a developer environment. And then we're going to have, we have a tools uh, that, is, that is actually inside with, together with the blocklet CLI. Uh, it's basically called a blocklet crate. Um, with this one command line, we're able to 
uh, on this screenshot, you will see this is the what you see when you uh, uh, when you uh, execute the blocklet create command. Uh, once you say blocklet create, uh, we're going to give you ask you a name and also ask you which template you're going to use to create this blocklet. You can have like a React plus Express, React Express, and with TypeScript, you can have this particular one is is use the uh, did wallet. This is a full stack app. This is give you a complete app uh, with the DID wallet integration. So with the code, you can. It's also very easy. Once you set up all those environment, you just have one command line, and uh, you create a blocklet. And this blocklet is going to have a full integration. You will see a simple in user interface, and uh, it has a full DID command built in. It just worked. If you get everything. You know, installed just a one command line, you get an empty project. So this empty project uh, going to integrate all those kind of DID wallet support, DID connect. Um, they're going to all work together. So here is a video. Uh, so this video show showed you the whole from beginning to end to let you know um, how to you know how to get this started. And we also have the follow. Uh, the following, um, you know, tutorials to let you know uh, if you want to add something for real here, uh, how to do it, and uh, of course uh, how to upload that to the uh, block store. So this is a so if you follow this tutorial here, you you will be able to create a, one of the empty project and then know how to you know uh, package them into a full blocklet. Um, what is missing here is your idea. So if you know how to write a code, you, you, you got to have some idea. But this is just a kind of a create this kind of whole full scaffold for you to use the ID and VC, uh, but it does not do anything. And it's because the idea is what you need to. Another example is more complex than this DID wallet version is, mm -hmm. is the one that built with DID Connect. Uh, so again, the same thing here is uh, the first part is the same is to help you to to build the uh, template. Um, the DID Connect is just to select a different, uh, different template. Uh, as you can see, with the DID Connect template. With the DID Connect template is basically, um, is more complex with, than the wallet version because the wallet version just lets you connect with the wallet, have the DID, and that, that is it. But the DID Connect version to, is basically a full integration of the, our DID Connect framework. Um, then you can, you are able to hacking with the DID frame, uh, connect framework to do the full, uh, full metrics. So the, the empty, the scaffold application is actually the application that we, uh, you can play directly with our DID connect playground. Right? So yesterday I mentioned a little bit in the DID connect, we have a playground here from the, this playground, you can have the, from one step one, two, three, four, so there's multiple steps for you to experience what DID Connect can do. It can lock, help you lock in. It can use ask you to present your user profile. It asks you to verify to present that you um, you can you can request this and give you an NFT non fungible token. You can also request the application to do a text signatures. And uh, uh, so there's multiple different type of signatures. Like this is just a sim simply sign a text, or you can sign a digest, the digest, sign the digest, for example, is, uh, is if you want to sign a document, you, you, it's not possible to kind of, a, the document could be very big, big, but instead of sign the whole, the whole thing, you sign the digest. So that makes it way much easier, faster to verify. It also could be sign a blockchain transaction. So basically this information you're going to sign is not just a random thing, it's a blockchain application, it's a blockchain transactions. And uh, the more high level part is it can request you to make a payment. Uh, it, it, and also it even support this kind of multiple claims, multiple, multiple steps. That basically means you, you want to, in, in the one, this one session, you want to verify multiple verifiable credentials. And, uh, or uh, it can, could be, become a step-by-step. -step. You want to first give me this, uh, present me this verifiable credential. Next, I'm going to ask you to present something else. So this is a, so this is the playground, but what we mm, building into this um, uh, sc basic scaffold is basically you will get the full code, full code of this playground. And so that's basically all hooked up for you. 
So uh, to hack in with this, it's going to be easy. For ex it's going to be easier because you don't need to care about how to hook up the DID uh, connect into your code. But instead, the, the, the code scaffold already built there for you. You just need to copy paste whatever, remove the, the part that you don't need to, and also add the code for you to what exactly you need you need to the users to you know, to pass you. Uh, for example, what exactly type of a verifiable credentials you're going to give, you're going to issue to the user. And uh, when you need the user to present a verifiable credentials, what exactly, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, what exactly, you know, fields you want to verify. So this is basically um, have this full scaffold for you, for the user to build a application that need a comprehensive uh, VC issuing and a VC verification. Uh, so I believe this kind of a example going to be able to kind of a, you know, fulfill uh, a, a f application idea that is really you know dive deep um, deep dive into the verifiable credentials and uh, um, but I don't know if somebody can will eventually actually build anything uh, for in this hackathon because this is actually need extensive knowledge about um, the verifiable credentials and DIDs. And uh, so there is final, there is another one uh, that is built on deep space. Again, this is the same. You just uh, uh, you install the uh, our uh, basic uh, developing environment. You just select the D app apps. This is going to give you a simple to do list. And but this to do list is going to uh, user be able to use a DID to log in. Uh, but the to do list eventually all the data going to sort as in the deep spaces. Uh, so the to-do list itself, um, uh, uh, so this is like a very simple um, applications that show, show, showcase uh, how you uh, store data um, in the data spaces and, uh, and then you can access from anywhere. And uh, if you use this, at the, imagine if you use this, kind of, uh, this to-do list as uh, a full service and each of the users, um, their to-do list are even you provide the service to them, each of those to-do to -do items are not stored on your servers. All those data are stored on users' data spaces. Yeah. Um, so after you kind of use, follow this um, guide, you are able to have this full function application up and running. And uh, uh, that is a full to-do list, um, but then you can start hacking from there. Um, if you so this kind of all of the guys here they are they're just tutorials, but if you really want to dig dive uh, into all the uh, informations, we have a lot of documents over here uh, from the platform from how to kind of all those different commands. Each of them they have a full document. Uh, for example, if you click the platform, the platform are going to have more document um, for you to deep dive into it. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of things to, to digest. And if you have any questions and uh, go to the R plus community, uh, this is a pretty active community here. Uh, we created one of the uh, dedicated uh, forum, so called hacks and support. Uh, usually you, you should be able to get all the answers within 24, 24 hours. And we highly recommend you to use this forum uh, instead of the Discord to to ask a serious questions, uh, because in the forum you are uh, it's, it's possible for you to you know to have screenshots, have all those details. For example, this is one of the uh, users asking the questions, and uh, <clears throat> and also more importantly, if you ask in the forums, your question could help others. So that that is a so we don't need to answer the same question again and again. It's, it's better and also it's better. And organized, so you you see, all each of those question has in the threads. You can you can search the forums. We have pretty nice search features here. It's full text search. Um, you can probably if you hit some problems, if there's somebody else already also hit. So there's already solutions there. So that's also going to be helpful. I think that's pretty much. Uh, there's a lot of things to digest. It's not that easy, um, but I you know highly recommend you know, people to try. To give it a try. So at least I think all our template and tools, um, they are all, they are all ready to use. You uh, so at least to get it started, it will not you know, um, it is not that hard. 
All right, any questions? So Andrew has asked the questions is if they only want multiple block class or made but connect each other to create one app so that works. Okay. That that's that's question is already answered. Okay, I, I think that's that pretty much for my today's talk. And uh uh happy hacking. Okay. Yeah, I think I just dropped the support link as well for people to go to as you mentioned that that's going to be a much better place than the than the discord but there's also a link the discord channel also has a link to it too um yeah. so either way yeah we will have engineers to look into the discord channel but we most likely we're going to just redirect you to the forum to to, to post a question in the forum great awesome Awesome. Well, sounds good. We'll have the recording out really soon and we'll get it out far and wide. But thank you once again, Robert, for running this session and everyone who attended. Thanks everyone for attending. Bye. I hope everyone Bye. has a great weekend.